In today's video, I want to address a concerning trend that I've seen in Chicago real estate. I use that word because I'm not really sure where it's headed or what it all means quite yet, but it's something I'm definitely keeping an eye on for 2023 and beyond. to the channel. I'm Matt Thomas with Baird and Warner Real Estate. I practice residential real estate full time here in the city of Chicago. If you're looking for a home in Chicago and you want to connect with my team, use the link in the notes below. We're happy to schedule time and help you find what you're looking for. And if you're looking for a home outside of Chicago, equally click the link below because I'm happy to refer you to agents around the world. I'll do the vetting for you. I'll do the interview for you and I'll make sure that you're connected with somebody competent and capable to align with your real estate objectives. And if you haven't already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, come on back, we're sharing valuable information all the time. I've noticed in showings recently that many of the people who are listing right now bought their home in 2020, 2021, even 2022, and they're trying to do a relatively quick turnaround in selling. I'm always of the opinion that you should enter real estate with a more long-term approach to your investment. If you're getting into this with anything under, I mean, at minimum, a three to five year runway, you're probably underestimating how much time you're going to need to make back your profit and appreciation or add value or whatever it might be. I'm more a fan of buying an asset and planning to hold it for at least five to 10 years, maybe more depending on if you're making income and if somebody else is paying the mortgage. That long-term approach really has some significant advantages for investors and it gives them a lot more options so that they don't get pigeonholed when they go to sell. Yet here we sit, it's the beginning of 2023 and I'm looking left and right at homes for sale that were purchased in 2020, 2021, 2022. So I have to ask why now, if we think back to when these purchases were made, they were buying at a time when real estate was like the hottest topic anybody could talk about. YouTube gurus, TikTok gurus, Zillow iBuying program, probably your grandma just trying to mobilize excess funds. Everybody was looking at real estate as the hottest investment you could make at that time. I think, unfortunately, there were a fair number of those people who were probably inexperienced or undereducated on exactly what they were stepping into in this world. And they're now coming to face the harsh reality of trying to sell that asset on the other end of things. Many of the people that bought during that time did so because they wanted to become landlords. Could be short term, could be long term. There was all this content in the world about how easy it is to make passive income through real estate. As a landlord and an investor myself, I can tell you easy is not a word that I often associate with those projects. Yes, I collect passive income in the sense that that's not my day-to-day -day job and they are paying me on a monthly basis. No, that does not mean it's an easy process. And I think, unfortunately, many investors, particularly new and novice investors, got into this space thinking it was as easy as acquire the property, place the tenant, collect checks. Boom, you're done. You do that forever. All of a sudden, you're going to be rich. In reality, there are so many things that come up for landlords that cost money, cause vacancy or just generally cause stress throughout the process. And I have to imagine now, a couple years in, it's been a crazy market. Many landlords are getting to the end of their ropes. They don't want to deal with this passive investment that they made a few years back. Maybe even worse off than landlords who got into this and are feeling overwhelmed. The flipper economy is in the toilet right now. Many people, including major billion dollar corporations like Zillow, came into this marketplace thinking they could buy while the trend was on a roller coaster up, get in, lightly improve the asset, and sell on the other side, catching that same roller coaster at a higher peak than when they got in. The flaw in that logic is that the roller coaster ride didn't keep going up. Prices cooled. In some markets, prices are already dropping. So if you bought a home and you slightly overpaid, now you're putting work into it, so you're in for more money than you thought, and the market has shifted to a point where you can't sell for the profits you plan to, you're seeing red across the board. And that's the reality for flippers right now. Many of them got into this thinking they could flip a project quickly. The cost would be relatively inexpensive. They could still catch that roller coaster appreciation. The problem is after they purchased, the cost of goods went up, the cost of labor went up, the ability to schedule things got very difficult. Things got back ordered, like appliances were taking weeks, if not months to be delivered. So as timelines got delayed, investor profits were hurt to the point where now Many of them are scrambling to just take a slight loss and limit the downside 
of this once very profitable flip. And then of course you have your normal everyday homeowner, people who bought their homes, they live in them, and unfortunately it's no longer servicing their needs. There is a large contingency of people who meet this category. People who left downtown thinking that COVID shut down the city and now several years later, the city is coming back, work from home is sort of tapering off and people are going back in the office. All of a sudden, that suburban destination is a hell of a commute and they're far from their friends who are still enjoying the downtown community as it comes back to life. There's also a fair number of people who made purchase decisions sacrificing things that they needed in a house because of how competitive the marketplace was. And now, after living there for several years, they're starting to realize maybe they sacrificed too much. Maybe the home they purchased doesn't actually meet their needs, particularly if they have a growing family or if they're changing lifestyles in a way that is going to impact their time at home. And on top of all of this, we have to think about the lending situation that was occurring when they bought these homes. Many people purchased using adjustable rate mortgages over the last few years. The idea was pretty simple. And if you talk to a lender anytime during 2020, 2021, even parts of 2022, you probably heard the same spiel. You can buy an adjustable rate loan. You can get in now. Sometime before that balloon payment comes along, we'll refinance you. Hopefully rates are in a little bit more favorable position. Everybody wins. Okay. Sounds great in theory, but what happened is interest rates skyrocketed. When these people bought in 2021, interest rates were free, 3%. Maybe four. So now we're talking about a market where they're looking at seven and rising. That's a very different dynamic for them. And unfortunately, if they are not seeing a window to refi at a lower rate, they're forced into refiing at this high 7% interest rate, or they have to accept the balloon payment that's coming on their loan, which is nasty terms and far beyond what anybody wants to pay. So you have this whole contingency of people, and, and admittedly, I don't have a statistic to back up what percentage of the buyers in that time period were using adjustable rate loans. But I think as we go through time, and particularly as we see the next few years, we're going to see more and more people who bought on these adjustable loans with balloon payments coming forced into making uncomfortable decisions because the interest rates aren't cooperating with the story they thought would come to fruition. To be honest, I really don't know exactly how to bring this video home, but where all this heads. What will be interesting to see is over the next few years, do these trends continue? Do we see more flippers stuck with projects trying to offload at prices that are probably below market value so that they can cut their losses? Do we see investors who are starting to feel the squeeze from Airbnb not being as profitable as it once was? Or landlord-tenant laws changing, slightly driving them away from wanting to be a landlord? Will that cause more landlord investors to sell over the next coming years? And if we have balloon payments out there in mass, how many people have rapidly approaching balloon payment dates that are forcing them to make some decisions? So I'm going to continue to watch this now into next year, into 2025, because I think we are going to see a trailing effect from the COVID buying period for many years. Exactly what this all means, I don't know, but it's worth keeping an eye on and it's something that I'll continue to report back on as we move forward.